Hello, and welcome to the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast Show. I am really excited. Today, we have a guest, Gina schmidt Deal. I say your last name correctly? Yes. yes. I'm really excited to have Gina here today. Um, she's going to tell a very powerful story, one that I think many people have, but don't have the courage to step out and share it. Um, so I'm, it's an honor that Gina, she shared her story a few times, um, and she's going to today on the podcast, but I'm just going to kind of introduce her. She is a wife and a mom, and she is an advocate. Her son, Gunner, has Down syndrome, and she's an advocate for people with disabilities, specifically in inclusion and education. Um, so she serves as the committee chair for the Down Syndrome Association of Minnesota and is a graduate of Partners in Policymaking, which is a program ran by the Minnesota Governor's Council on Developmental Disabilities. Um, she's been in the fitness industry for 15 years, and now she's at home with her kids and homeschools her three kids. Um, she attends Eagle Brook Church in Lionel Lakes, Minnesota, um, and a few of her favorites are Starbucks, pink drink. Oh my gosh. I don't even know if I've tried that before. <laughs> um, Chick-fil-A sandwich with the extra pickles. Oh, I love that. Um, Pilates and then sitting in the sun with a good book. So welcome, Gina. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so you right now have three kids. So Gunner's the middle. Um, you adopted your youngest and then your, how old, what is her? Tell me about your family. Yeah, yeah. So our oldest uh, deacon will be seven uh, tomorrow from the date that we're recording this. Mm -hmm. And then um, Gunner is five and a half and he'll be in kindergarten next year, which is crazy to think about. And our youngest Layla is 20 months. So she'll be two in August. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. Um, yeah. And so Gina is actually on Instagram. So you can find her on Instagram, her and her family models. Um, so she's open for booking. So that's not why we're doing the show, but I'm just putting a <laughs> throw out there for her. Um, and it's real dot Schmidt deals. And I'll actually put this in, um, information in the show notes. Um, and then also kind of where you follow your podcast. So it'll be on the details for that. Um, so yeah, so go ahead and just kind of share your story, Gina. Um, this, this, this is Strong Tower Mental Health. And so we talk about, you know, where we were and then what the Lord has done in our life. And um, I really think you have a lot of re very powerful redemption in your story. Um, so as you are listening, listeners, I just, I want you to allow yourself to just receive the freedom that she's received. Um, because the Lord says freely you receive, freely you've given, and then also whatever he does once, he will do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a big reason I do share is because of, <clears throat> excuse me, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him, which is Satan, mm -hmm. by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And I think our testimonies are so powerful, whether good or bad, yes. um, the hard and the easy, all of it. Yeah. Um, but God can redeem anything, anything. Um, the things that were done to us, the things that we have done, um, all of those sins he can take and, and turn into good, yeah. um, and, and to glorify him. So, um, another verse that I really just love is Genesis 50, 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. Wow. And Ooh. it is, it's really emotional for me. Um, but I do believe God gave me this story to save more lives. Yes. And um, when I when I was a kid, I, I grew up in a um, just not an emotionally healthy home. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was and and still is an alcoholic, and that um, it's just it's hard, you know, especially being a girl and <clears throat> that father figure. Um, yeah, it's, it's just hard. Yeah. Um, so I did not grow up in the church knowing God or Jesus or anything to do with that. Um, and so I found relationship with um, men, boys, you know, all throughout my teenage years and, and young adult life um, and not healthy relationships necessarily. Um, but finally, um, did find a healthy relationship when I was, um, had just turned 18 and, um, felt really good in that and felt like I was in love. And, um, a, really a, a few short months after we started dating, um, we found out that we were pregnant and, um, completely unexpected. 
um, obviously not taking right precautions um, for that. And uh, he was just a couple years older and he was in college and he did not want to have a child. And um, I'm, I'm not at all blaming this all on him because we both had a, a say in this, but um, I think a big reason for the decision that we made is because I, I wanted to stay with him. Um, so we decided to um, get an abortion on April 29th in 2006. And um, my life really didn't change much after that. Um, we stayed together, this, this guy and I, um, we had the same lifestyle. Um, my values and habits were the same and I really just didn't regret anything. Um, what that turned into was about two and a half years later when he broke up with me, um, my life kind of started to spiral downward. Um, I developed really, really bad body image issues, disordered eating habits, depression. Um, I was drinking too much. And um, finally, I had a friend in 2010 that invited me to church. Um, and things just started opening up. Um, it was, I, I remember crying every single service in music. I mean, every single time, because it's just like, you want to feel forgiven but you feel like you can't because of, again, the things that were done to me and that I did myself. And I just felt like I was too far gone. Mm -hmm. And you felt like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people feel like that. And, and that's, that's the whole reason that Jesus died for us is so that we could be forgiven. He shed his blood so that we could have that forgiveness and that redemption. And Finally, I, I started focusing on my mental health, um, physical health. I got a therapist. Um, I went to a small group. I went to church every week, and, and things just kind of started to unfold for me. Um, and I feel like God just kind of kept pursuing me in that, too, yeah. and was starting to rewrite my story. Wow. Um, so about a year later, after I started attending church, um, which we still go to, Eagle Brook, um, I met my now husband mm -hmm. and we didn't start our relationship out right intimacy wise. We were, we were still having sex, um, but we were growing in our faith together. We were going to church together. We were, we had an overall healthy relationship and that, so we, we were building on that. Um, and around Christmas time in 2012, so about a year and a half after we were dating, um, we both felt this nudge from the Holy Spirit that we needed to stop having sex. And we made that decision um, at, on Christmas Eve in 2012 to save that part of our relationship for our marriage. And then a year and a half later, we were married. So we kind of did half of our relationship one way and half of our relationship God's way. Yeah. And I really think that God honored that. Um, and we, we got married um, in 2014. And then just shy of a year later, we had our first son. Mm -hmm. And um, he was born exactly nine years later um, to the date of my abortion on April 29th in 2015. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So God just totally redeemed wow. that date for me um, on that, you know, that one instance. Um, he just said, I am for you, you know, and he, he changed that for me that really hard date into something that's now beautiful. You know, we have, we have our, our first set together. Um, and he continued to redeem uh, that really, really hard part of my story. Um, so Brian was actually deployed uh, right after Deacon was born and then he got home and surprised we found out we were pregnant again <laughs> shortly after he came home. Yeah. Um, and uh, we went in for our 20 week ultrasound. We wanted to find out if, if this baby was going to be our boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was just a really, really long ultrasound. And at the end, they're like, Oh, we didn't get really good pictures of your baby's heart. We'd like you to go downtown and get a 40 ultrasound just to, you know, and they, it really wasn't alarming at all. They just said, mm -hmm. we need some better pictures. So the next day we took our then 14 month old with us. <laughs> so Deacon, and just, again, not thinking it was a big deal. Um, and three hours later of all of these scans, um, they basically, it was a very just dry um, doctor. And, and she basically said that when the baby dies, we need to get them out of you. And they, he had a heart defect, basically. Um, he had a, um, a really, really long um, 
a diagnosis called Epstein's anomaly of the tricuspid valve, which just means that one of his valves was misplaced and his upper chamber of his heart was enlarged. So his heart was enlarged. Um, and it was so scary. And I just remember and so many people coming over and praying over my belly and yes. praying over this baby. Um, yes. And it was just a really. Um, so the, but the doctor said when? Yeah. Yeah. Like it not, was just, not, it was oh, so bad. Is, what's going, yeah. Oh my God. And, and yeah. yeah, I think that um, is another thing that is uh, part of my adv- advocacy is um, making sure that doctors are, are mm-hmm. giving unbiased information yeah, and just good. information. Here's yes. what, here's what this is Yes. and not good or bad. Just here's what this is. Yeah, that's um, good. And I will put a little plug in for Jack's basket. Um, Carissa Carroll is amazing. She, yep. um, they go and do medical outreach and they, they do um, teach about how to give unbiased information and wow. They're doing amazing work in the Down syndrome community, but really overall, how to how give any, we, how can we find that information? Is there a website? Yeah, I, um, I'm pretty sure they're jacksbasket.org. Okay. Um, they're a nonprofit here in Minnesota, okay. but they're, they're actually worldwide. They yep. celebrate babies born with Down syndrome. They send out these baskets. Yep. Um, so if any of your listeners know themselves that they're going to have a baby with Down syndrome or a friend, yep. they can nominate them and um, they'll receive this basket with a yep. bunch of information and just, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And, and God just really continued to redeem um, my story in that because we were offered some prenatal testing um, originally and we declined. And then as we kind of talked about it, we're like, gosh, it would be really nice to know and just kind of prepare for things. Mm-hmm. So we did. Um, get his diagnosis of Down syndrome prenatally about 26 weeks or so. Okay. And in the United States, 67% of babies um, are diagnosed with Down syndrome prenatally are aborted. And wow. it's just, it's heartbreaking wow. um, because wow. a lot of people are getting misinformation. Yes. Um, and, and so that's informing the absolutely. choices that they're making. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And um and not that life with a child with a, a different need is not hard, but God doesn't call us to easy either. Mm-hmm. And um, the joy that Gunnar brings our family completely, you know, passes, surpasses any amount of extra challenges that we have raising him. Yeah. Um, so that was just another way that, you know, God just redeemed that for me. And after actually very soon after Gunnar was born, um, we did start talking about adoption for a couple different reasons, but we really, really wanted another child with Down syndrome. We wanted people to know that people with Down syndrome are loved, they're valued, and they're worthy of life. And just because someone doesn't want them, they are still wanted. Yes. And yes they, they still belong in a family and they're still loved and, and just so we're just so grateful for Gunnar. And so we really wanted to adopt another child with Down syndrome. Um, so we kind of, were, we started pursuing that. We got our, our home study done in April of 2020. And then we started kind of showing our profile and, um, there's a couple different online platforms that share children, um, with Down syndrome that need homes. Mm-hmm. And we, um, saw a couple of older children in the United States. Typically you're, you're seeing older children, um, uh, out of, out of the States. What is that? Um, internationally. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we were really open to that, but you kind of, you have to pick a lane when you do adoption. So we, we picked domestic and, um, after seeing these profiles of, of a couple of older kids, like three, four, five, we were like, this is what we want. This is what we want to do. Um, down the road. <laughs> so we, we would really like to adopt an older child with Down syndrome eventually. Um, but we felt called to keep our birth order at, at this point in our lives. And we also really, really desired having a little girl. Um, our two boys are so active and great. Um, but we just really, really, really wanted a little girl. Yes. So we kind of switched paths just a little bit and we just started presenting our profiles to just girls, um, with or without down syndrome, we were just kind of more open to that. And, um, God turned that around really, really quickly. We were matched very quickly with our, our daughter, um, and her birth mother. And, um, we got, we got her profile. They call it on a Tuesday. We got the, we sent in our profile on Thursday. And then on Friday, they called us and said, you were chosen. Congratulations. 
and birth mom's water just broke. <laughs> so like four days later, no way. oh my gosh, it was like, oh my, oh my gosh. And they're like, do you, do you want to continue with this adoption? And we're like, oh uh, yeah, but we need to figure some yeah. things out here. Yeah. <laughs> we, and it just all fell into place. We got childcare for the boys for the whole weekend. Um, wow. their finance, like everything just fell into place. And so we flew out on Monday. Um, she was finally born Sunday night. We flew out on Monday. Yeah. Um, we actually met with her birth family the night before we ever met Layla because of COVID. Um, we couldn't actually meet Layla until we were her legal parents. So that was very interesting. Wow. So we signed all the papers. Um, and it was just a, a whirlwind of a week and we had a daughter. <laughs> wow. And, um, just amazing God things with, with her adoption. Um, on Tuesday night, when we met her birth mom, we asked if there was any names that she had picked out or that we could honor for her. And, and we had chosen Layla, like before Gunner was born, like, she, you know, we wanted a girl, we wanted to name her Layla. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I, I named her, I named her Layla. And we're like, what? <laughs> Same spelling too. And it's like, no way. How does that happen? <laughs> Just amazing. And, um, her birth mom, oh, yeah, God. it totally just all God. And, um, her birth mom's last name is moon. So we named her Layla moon oh. and she's just uh, the best addition to our family. And, um, I will acknowledge that adoption is messy and hard and heartbreaking and, and adoption only comes through heartbreak and, um, that child leaving their family of origin. Um, but it, it's also beautiful and redemptive and amazing. Um, and I'm so, so thankful that we have a very open adoption with Layla's birth mom. Um, we've been able to see her um, for Layla's first birthday. We flew out there. Um, we're really prayerful and hopeful that she will be able to come out here and meet our whole family and our extended family um, this summer. And God just continues to, to move in that um, area of both of our lives. Um, I, I say this, um, all the time that, that Layla's birth mom is just so strong and she is a daughter of the King and she's amazing. And God just has intertwined our lives in the most amazing way. And he continues to redeem mine. Um, and we get to celebrate another birthday tomorrow, which is Sanaya's also on April 29th. Who's her so, yeah. Layla's birth mom, her birthday is also April 29th. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. So goodness. just the way that God continues to redeem just that date for me um, and that choice that I made and continue to give him um, all the glory in doing that in my life um, is just amazing. When we learned her birthday, I, I just was like floored. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. Um, and he's just continuing to work powerful ways in, in my life and in my story. And, um, I'm just so thankful. Yeah. Um, what would you say is kind of the biggest, um, like, you know how, when you move from like the Damascus experience where Paul, you know, couldn't see, he moves from Saul to Paul where he can't see there's scales on his eyes and all of a sudden he can see what would you say was like the biggest moment for you where the scales just came off your eyes and, and you're like, I'm worthy. I'm loved. I'm enough. Like when throughout your story, when did that moment happen for you? Yeah. Um, that was, it was really hard. Um, so Brian didn't know until after we got married, actually. Um, so we were pregnant with our oldest, with Deacon. Mm -hmm. He was in school. He was doing some online classes and he had a religion class and he was writing about abortion. And he was really writing about how terrible it was, how he didn't agree with it because of his faith and, and all of this. And I just broke down and I was sobbing. And I said, I don't know if you're, you're going to forgive me. I don't know how you're going to take this. It was, it was terrifying. Wow. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm pregnant with our child. Like, yes. <laughs> um, so I told him and he was so graceful, hmm. just so graceful. He had, he had, um, just so much empathy, mm -hmm. um, and so much love for me that he knew that's not who I 
was, who I currently was. Right. Right. And he, yeah, he just had so much grace for me in that moment. Um, and I knew that that was given to him, um, to see me in that way and that I could see myself that way. So that was really like the biggest moment for you mm-hmm. because you felt a lot of shame about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Brian was able to say, no, there's no shame. Yep. Yeah. Just like what Romans 8, 1 says, there's no condemnation in the kingdom mm-hmm. of God. Yeah. And so no matter what choice we have made, even if it's been an abortion, there is no shame. Right. Like God loves us no matter what. Yes. What would you say to a mom who is out there who has not shared their story? And this is a big secret. Mm -hmm. And they might be hearing this for the first time and they're, they have a, maybe they even have a family or they're thinking about having a family um, and they're feeling shame about this. Um, And what would you say? Like, what, what do they need to know? You're forgiven. You are forgiven in Jesus. And, and it, it takes an ask. You need to be asked or you need to ask for that forgiveness. Um, and then walk in that truth yeah. of being forgiven. Um, because again, that's, that's what Jesus did for us. That's why he died on the cross. That's why he carried all of our sins. And that's why he washed us clean and as white as snow. I mean, that's, that's how he makes us. And, and we're going to sin daily, big and little things. Um, and, and that's, that's why, um, so that we can walk in that forgiveness and so that we can share it with others. Um, I, there's, there's no way that God put those dates, you know, in my story to not share. Mm -hmm. And as, as, um, terrifying that it is to share this, um, my, my parents don't know they'll be listening to this and this will be the first time that they'll hear this. Um, my in-laws, you know, my, a lot of people, a lot of people do not know this part of my story, but, um, I feel like God has given me this story to share, to help others, um, so that he can be glorified. And so that other people can, can walk in, in life with him and, and feel that forgiveness also. Thank you, man. I mean, there's so much courage and you sharing. Thank you so much for sharing this. And, um, you know, I have another question around this because as you're talking, I'm thinking, I know that there's some people that um, because of what we have going on in the world, I think there's a lot of people that can get a little, um, I don't want to say complacent, but, you know, you can, you're like, I loved God, but then the next moment you're, you know, like you talked about how you were in your early 20s, just like, you know, making choices that aren't always healthy choices and it's fine, but then you love Jesus the next day and you go to church the next day. Um, What would you say to someone who is struggling with believing that abortion is actually not, it is not, is not a good choice. Like, I think there's some people that are Christians and they believe that it's okay, that abortion Mm -hmm. is okay. And um, I think two things to that. I mean, the, the mom, I know a lot of people want to support the mom, right? Well, it's, it's her choice. It's her body. It's, it's all that, but you're not thinking about the emotional trauma that an abortion could bring that mother. I mean, it's, I don't know statistics or anything, but I know a lot of women that have had abortions have tried to commit suicide, have eating disorders, have mental health for their entire life Yes, because of this trauma that they have gone through Mm -hmm. and, and it's a choice that they've made. And if they can't find this forgiveness, that that's something, and and I'm, I'm, I will deal with this for the rest of my life. I'm, I'm so thankful that Jesus has called me forgiven and and I will know that always, but I will still have to deal with this heartache Mm -hmm. forever for my entire life, because it's very, very sad. Um, and for that child, I mean, I, it, science, science says, <laughs> you know, that, that, that baby is a child, um, from fertilization, from conception. And, and we know that as believers, but science also backs that up also. Mm-hmm. Um, and gosh, I mean, if we can't even talk about life 
you know, as a, as a right for all people, I, you know, I can dive into eugenics about, I mean, all of this, it's like, how can we not value a person based on age or based on ability or based on race? All of this comes into that. And it's just so much of a bigger issue instead of just so choosing one, choose both. We can choose both. We can support this woman and this child in whatever that means. If that means that she's going to keep this baby and raise this baby, there's so many pregnancy resource centers that have everything available that you could ever need to raise a child. So many supports out there. And if she chooses adoption, there are so many loving families that, that like mine, that, that really want open adoptions. That means that you're a part of our family also. Deacon is so sweet. He says, well, Layla has so many people that love her and, and Sanaya, her birth mom. She's like, she's a part of our family too. And I said, yeah, buddy, she absolutely is. That's so beautiful. And I mean, there's just so many people that will rally around you in either of those decisions mm -hmm. um, and whatever that means, raising your child or, or placing your baby for adoption, making an adoption plan. Those are two very loving choices that you know are the better choice. I mean, they truly are. Killing a child is not a, a choice that I, that I feel like anyone could really feel like that's right, I guess. Well, one of the things that I've thought about when I have, because I've even watched documentaries on women who've actually gotten abortions and they talk about their story and they're like, yep, I'm good now. I'm good. And, and they, it's like this documentary to really show the support of abortion and how they're all right emotionally and they're okay. And they go to work and, and it's almost like they're ad, you know, they're really advocating for it. But as I'm watching this and I'm seeing, um, it's like, they're trying to say that they're okay. Right. They're, I, I can see it in their eyes that there there's a hurt and there's a pain that you can't deny when you yep. create a life, that life is valuable. And yep. the thing that it makes me think about is if we think that a baby's life doesn't matter because, you know, oh, it's going to go into the foster care. Or there's so much statistics around un, unwed mothers and it's not okay. And all this stuff, if we focus on that and say, well, yeah, we have to do this. What it's doing is it's coming back to how we think about ourself. Mm -hmm. so if you think that abortion is okay, then what you're doing is you're saying that your life doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it's the basis, it's at the root of how you believe in the world. It's your worldview. And that actually comes back to the seed and the root of you. Right. Which is why I think we have so many people in the world that are kind of like, orphans. If I had an episode that went live a couple of weeks ago with Harmony Klingenmeyer, and she talks about the orphan spirit and how we're walking around as, or even if we have a mom and dad, like you said, you grew up in this home where emotionally you're not, you don't feel loved, even though they're there and yep, they give you food and they'll give you clothes. And you're like, okay, they're doing these things for me, but I'm not feeling worthy right mm. now. And I just want to quote Jeremiah 1 5 that says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Each one of our life is valuable. Mm -hmm. And if we want to say that someone else's life, whether it's a baby that hasn't been born or someone who's, you know, 90 years old, if we want to say that that person doesn't have worth, we're saying, we don't have worth and we're disagreeing with what God says. So we can't like make something else up besides what God says, right? Like yeah. that's what he says, <laughs> we are worthy. He appointed us. Each one of us are called to do something to have there's purpose and there's a will for our life. Um, and I just, I really feel like he's redeeming life. And your story is one that is more powerful than you even know. Um, and I feel like you're going to see that number over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, I think I looked the number up in my, I have this number book by Troy Brewer and I think 29 means mountain. Or yeah, you told me that, yeah. Yeah, that there's repetition in the Bible about the number 29, which means mountain. And so I just believe it's going to be 
Like he's got doors open for you that you don't even understand <laughs> because you're just saying yes to him and yes yeah. to family and yes to life. And he's going to bless you beyond what you, your brain gets. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I would love it if you could pray for the listeners, Gina, um, you, you carry um, a lot of freedom that other people need. Um, and so I'd love if you can pray just whatever the Holy Spirit leads and um, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. Um, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for this time. I thank you for Heidi. I thank you for this platform that you've given her to share. And Lord, I, I thank you for the story that you've given me, for the redemption that you've given me. And Lord, I, I thank you for giving that to me so that I can share it with others, Lord. Um, I know that you've called me to share this as hard as it is. Um, and Lord, I know the reason is so that I can share this forgiveness and this redemption um, that comes from you with others. And Lord, I just hope that anyone listening to this right now can feel that forgiveness in you, Lord. And I just I pray that they ask for it and I pray that they receive it. And Lord, um, I just pray that you're you're with us as we walk um, with you in this journey, as we become closer to you and that you lead us um, closer to finding more about you every single day. Um, Lord, again, I thank you for this time. And um, we ask that you bless everyone listening in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And anybody that's still feeling like trickles of trauma that they have, I just want to encourage you just see it as, as Gina is praying and you're opening to this yes to talk to someone, just see it going to the foot of the cross. Like when she talked about how she went to church and she's crying, that, that was the Lord like cleansing her. That was the Lord comforting her. That's a good Papa loving her. And so when you're when you are in pain and you have a good parent who's hugging you and loving you, you cry because it, it feels good yeah. to be loved. And so just allow yourself to just be comforted by God. Give him your stuff. You have to say yes and say, God, I give you this choice that I made. I give you this trauma that has happened to me or that I did to someone else. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it happened to you or if you made a choice, yep. but you have to actually see it being given to him and then ask him to then fill you. So there needs to be that exchange. So you're not just empty with all given away all your stuff that you ask, Holy Spirit, come fill me with your peace. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your presence. And he, re he, re he is a redeemer. Mm -hmm. And so I thank you all listeners um, for being here in the show. Um, and I just pray for you to have a wonderful and amazing redemptive week. <laughs>